welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you some dinners that only have five ingredients or less. They are all fun, they're easy, they're budget friendly. I know that you guys are gonna love them. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna get started on is beef enchilada casserole. I love some good beef enchiladas. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is get one pound of uh, ground beef, just ground it up, get it nice cooked through, and I'm just using a paper towel to get all the excess grease off of it. I find that using this method is just a little bit easier than having to get another um, colander out and just making more dishes, and that's just not something I wanna do. Next, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of uh, taco seasoning and then one four ounce can of green chilies. I'm also going to add 28 ounce can of enchilada sauce. And then I'm gonna add about a cup of shredded up cheese, giving that a good stir. Over to the table, I'm going to just put a little bit of sauce into my pan. So now I'm just using a 10 ounce can of sauce. And so now I'm using my tortillas. I'm just gonna layer this because it's gonna be more of like um, um, a lasagna type of a style. So we're just going to layer this just a little bit at a time. So I'm taking about a third of my mixture, putting down um, that first, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of black beans, a little bit of cheese. And then um, just repeating the process as I go. So now I'm adding the tortillas. And this is my top layer. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the rest of my ground beef mixture that I have. Just put that right on top. Make it nice and even, spreading it out properly. All right. And then I am going to layer another little bit of black beans right on top of that. And then we're gonna do um, some more tortillas and I just kind of um, tore this like last two tortillas just so that everything will be kind of nice and even on top. And then my last layer is just the rest of that um, sauce, that enchilada sauce. All right, and then of course, we're gonna top it with a lot more cheese, about a cup and a half of cheese right on top. If you guys know me, you guys know I love 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 cheese <laughs> so definitely gonna add a lot of that I ran out of my regular cheese so I had to use another different type of cheese and then I'm gonna put this in the oven 350 for 35 minutes look how beautiful she is after she is done cooking oh I love beef enchiladas and I really enjoyed this into like a casserole this might be more of my favorite way to make it. Um, it just seemed a little bit easier. Um, but you guys, this was so good. I topped mine with some like sour cream and some cher cherry tomatoes. We also had um, some rice with it. Um, and we even had like some chips and um, salsa. Because we have to have chips and salsa for having a Mexican dish, you guys. This was absolutely phenomenal. You guys are going to love this one. This was a huge hit for us. Okay, now we're gonna be doing this chicken Alfredo bubble up. So to a nine by 13 pan, we're gonna go ahead and lightly grease that. We're gonna take one can of biscuits. I just um, diced this up into probably six pieces per biscuit. I put that at the very bottom of our pan. Now to a large bowl, we're going to take about a cup and a half of cooked chicken, or you guys can use rotisserie chicken, whichever you guys prefer. And then I'm going to take a whole, it's about 15 ounces of um, Alfredo sauce. And then I did kind of use a little bit of water to make sure we got all that Alfredo sauce out. I'm also going to use one cup of spinach and you can use dry or you can use um, the frozen one. I typically just always do the frozen just because I don't always have the, the dry um, and fresh ones on hand. I'm going to mix that together and then I'm going to put that right on top of our biscuits. And of course, I'm going to just make sure that that's all nice and even. All right, I have two cups of mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna put right on top of that. 
and then just give that another good layer make sure it's all nice and even all right we're gonna put this in the oven 375 for 30 minutes just want to make sure all those biscuits are nice and cooked through I always try to check the middle just to make sure that it is really good and it was perfect everything was cooked through absolutely perfectly it is so so cheesy so if you guys are just in love with cheesy dishes this one is perfect for you pair this with the salad and maybe like some garlic bread you guys this is so easy so simple you guys are gonna love this one so good Okay, next we're doing this meatball casserole so to our casserole dish just go ahead and lightly grease that one and then I have about 14 ounces of noodles the recipe calls for a whole pound but I did 14 and it was about perfect so I would definitely do less versus more I have three cups of water that I'm gonna add and then I just added a little bit of Italian seasoning about a teaspoon and then you're going to add one jar of marinara sauce or pasta sauce. And I did kind of rinse it out to make sure that we got all of the pasta sauce out. And then we're going to add 24 ounces of meatballs. And I definitely suggest like stirring that before adding the meatballs just because it was a little bit harder to stir it all together with the meatballs. But I made it work somehow, but I didn't end up making a little bit of mess on my tablecloth. I'm going to cover this with some foil. I'm going to put this in the oven at 375 for 20 minutes. And then after the 20 minutes is up, I'm going to take the foil off and then put the mozzarella cheese on and then let that cook for another 10 min minutes in the oven. Okay, and then once it's done cooking, this is kind of what it's going to look like. It should be very cheesy. Um, the noodles should be absolutely perfect. But if you want to test uh, one of the noodles just to make sure that they are cooked through, you may have to add just a little bit more time. You may not. I didn't. Um, they were just like right on spot. But, you know, each oven is different. So you might just want to check that. But this was so delicious. So good. And next is this Ritz chicken casserole. And so to our 9 by 13 pan, of course, we're going to grease it. We don't want to get anything sticky to it. I'm going to take four cups of rotisserie chicken, place it at the very bottom. And you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way I did it. You can all just like get a big mixing bowl, mix this all together. I just decided to put the chicken at the very bottom. And then to a medium bowl, I'm going to take one can of cream of mushroom soup. And then I'm also going to take one cup of sour cream. And then I'm just going to give that a good mix together. Okay, once it's mixed together, I'm going to take our casserole dish and I'm just going to place that right on top of our chicken. And I am just, you know, spreading it out, making sure it's nice and even on top. Okay, and then once it's nice and even on top, I'm going to take half of a sleeve of Ritz crackers. Um, this is what the recipe called for, but I did not agree, so I ended up using another half of a sleeve. So I definitely recommend doing a whole sleeve of Ritz crackers. Um, I think it just tastes a lot better. <laughs> and then I have half a stick of butter that I just melted. And I'm just going to put that right on top of our crackers. And that is it. That is all that we need for this meal. Um, I'm going to place this in the oven at 350 for 25 minutes. You guys, so good. It's so simple. So good. You guys are going to love this. I love having Ritz crackers or like Cheez-Its or um, saltines, like any type of cracker on top of my casseroles. I just think they taste absolutely amazing. This was so creamy with the sour cream and the creamy chicken. So good. We had some like corn and we had um, a side salad with this. This was a delicious dinner. Okay, the last thing we're going to be doing is this super easy sloppy joe casserole. So to a saucepan, I need to go ahead and ground up one pound of ground beef. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that there is no grease in it whatsoever because we're going to be adding the sauce and I do not want this um, greasy whatsoever. So we have a can of sloppy joe sauce. You can just use whatever type of um, uh, brand that you prefer. My husband just grabbed this um, off brand for me, which is 
completely fine. I really do like that chunky um, sandwich, sandwich one. That one is like my favorite. So to a 9x13 pan, now we're going to grab one roll of crescent dough. We're going to just go ahead and smooth that out. And then we're going to put our sloppy joe mix right on top of those crescent dough rolls. Make sure we're getting all the things out of that pan. Go ahead and make sure it's nice and level, smoothing it out everywhere. And then we're gonna add one and a half cups of sharp cheddar cheese or medium cheddar cheese is fine as well. And then we're just going to make sure that's nice and level. All right, we're gonna put this in the oven, 350 for 25 minutes. This is what it looks like when it's all done. I was like, always I always like to make sure and check the metal just to make sure that that dough is completely cooked through and it was so now I'm just plating it up this was like the easiest dinner ever you guys so so easy and you guys can have this with chips or usually for like sloppy joes we like to have some french fries or some baked beans those are usually good as well this time we just had this with some chips and kind of called it good um but this was like the easiest dinner you guys could ever make this was a huge hit Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I have tons of other videos just like this on my channel, so make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!